And some time ago, we talked about how you can make seamless textures in Blender by simply using a couple of tools made available as add-ons by developers, which takes advantage of stable diffusion in Blender. And today, we're going to be looking at how you can create materials and convert them into assets and save them directly into Blender without actually doing so much work. The tools which we're going to be using for this is the Materialize tool and also a Material Asset Creator add-on. Materialize is a very simple to use standalone tool that simply allows you to create materials from simple textures and from a single image you can create height, metallic, smooth, normal and occlusion texture maps. And how this works is super easy. The very first thing which you need to do is download Materialize. Materialize comes in as a simple zip file which you need to unzip and once you unzip this file you'll be able to find an exe file that is available to you. Once you open up the exe file how you navigate across Materialize is super easy. With the middle mouse button you can simply pan, the right mouse button can simply make you upbeat across the model and if you roll in and roll out your mouse you can zoom in and zoom out. Something else which also makes a lot of sense is you have a couple of buttons which we're going to talk about soon but creating materials with this is super super easy. The very first thing which you need to do is go over to the diffuse section, click on the O button and then select the texture and load that in. And once you load it in, go over to the height section, you can now click on create, adjust the height map parameters how you want and click on set as height map. You can do the very same thing for the metallic. Now each time you create a new texture map and set that texture map, I would suggest that you click on the show full material button so you can preview the entire material at once instead of second guessing what the final look of the material would be like. Now now let's create the ambient occlusion we can set that and i think this looks good let's also go ahead and make some adjustment because you can always adjust any of these maps anytime you want and like we've mentioned severally when you're working with black and white textures especially texture maps like the height map most times the white simply means one while the black simply means zero anything in between one and zero are the gray areas and depending on how far it travels from one point to another this is how the value of the texture actually travels so if you want something to be a bit more pronounced make sure that that value is set to white and if you want it to be less pronounced you can set it all the way to black once we're done with this you can click on the next cube map which is basically a hdri map that switches the lighting and you can use this to tell if you're getting the materials exactly how you want them to be. Of course, you can also change the model of display type. These are very useful and basic set of models that actually shows you both the displacement, which in this case is the height, and also the normals, the ambient occlusion, and the diffuse map. I did find out that the smoothness map is the roughness map. So if you're working with this, also keep that in mind. In case you'd like to add some roughness to your material, you might also want to consider doing that. The edge map, which is one that I've actually not used, but in this case, we're just going to try that. And once you're done, you can play with the lighting. Always take a look at the show full material to see the final look of what you're going for. I do appreciate the extra tools that comes with this texture alignment tool that allows you to adjust the texture however you want depending on what you're trying to create. So you might have a distorted texture but in certain cases you might want to adjust these things to actually look really cool and this is where a tool like this comes in very handy. There's also the post processing tool which you can use to add post process effects. You might also want to explore the tile maps and this is going to be very useful for those who like to create seamless textures for the texture that they're working on. So at certain times you might just want to drag in a file and simply use that but with something like this you can definitely create seamless texture and tile this however you choose and use this to generate your own seamless texture. Next up we're going to go over to Blender and if you don't have this add-on then you might want to consider taking a look at the previous video where we talked about how you can work with the Dream Texture AI. We're going to use the Dream Texture AI to create a couple of textures and once we have the seamless textures made we would go over and export these things into a given folder. Now before we start creating our textures I would suggest that you go over to the link which I'm going to put in the description and check out the Material Asset Creator. For you to get this it's pretty simple. Click on the drop down and download the zip file. Of course, there's no release page right here, so you have to use this part to get this file. 
Now, once you download the zip file, if you open up Blender, you can go over to edit, go over to preference and install it. It is worth mentioning that this only works with Blender 3.3 and above. Now, once we have this ready, we can now go over to the materialize tool and create the material that we want. You can play with the textures however you want and generate the textures to your liking. Now, in this case, we already have this texture looking pretty. Let's zoom all the way out. And I kind of think that maybe we can make some adjustments with the height, but my probably just let it be the way it is let's also go ahead and make some smooth ones i'm going to just simply throw that in i think we can just set this the way it is let's see and for the height map i think we should just click on the create button and sort of drop the contrast down about the point like so click on that let's see what we have right now it looks a bit better off okay so i don't really want it to be too harsh so i'm just going to set it the way it is and from here is where we get to start exporting and how i would suggest that you export this is create a folder and export all of these into that folder in this case we're just going to give it a name and put an underscore and call it diffuse it is paramount that you get the spellings properly when naming the textures and it doesn't matter if the file format you're using is the bitmap jpeg png or even the tiger file. Now, once you have all these things ready, the next thing which you need to do is to pop up Blender. So with Blender simply open right here, what we're going to do is to explore the add-on that we installed previously. I'm going to press N on the keyboard, go over here and you notice that we have the asset add-on. So if you click on the asset add-on, you would see it specifies the type of texture maps that you'll be loading in. And owing to the fact that with the materialize tool, what we've actually done is to create a height map, a diffuse, normal, metallic, smoothness, which is basically the roughness map and also the ambient occlusion. And those are the maps that we need to specify. So I'm just going to come here and say, okay, we have the displacement, which is the height, the normal. We don't have the specularity. We do have the roughness, which is basically smoothness map that we looked at we have the metallic we have the ambient occlusion and we have the diffuse so the next thing to do is to simply go over to the folder where you exported all of this and confirm them i'm going to select the url and copy this out come back into blender paste this and then press the enter button now once you do that let's go over to the material section to confirm that we have no material here and then the next thing to do is to click on create materials now, depending on the number of materials that you've saved previously or depending on the directory of materials that you have there, this would take a look at all of those folders and create the materials for you. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on create materials. And once we do that, if we click on this drop down, you would notice that we have a new material called wood. Let's get rid of this and actually put a simple grid. I'm just going to scale this all the way up, subdivide this by five, go over to the modifier, set this to simple, and then we would apply the material to this. So to confirm if this material is hooked up properly, we're going to drag this all the way out, switch this to the shader editor, click on the drop down and select wood. So once you do that, you would see that all the materials have been hooked up. And if there's any adjustment, you can now go in and start adjusting this. But before we actually apply it, there is a button right here that says Mac Material Asset. So if you have a bunch of materials, you can proceed to create them and then click on the Mac Material Asset. And this would automatically create all of these materials that you've made and set them as asset. To take a look at this, you need to switch and go over to your asset browser and automatically you would notice that we have this right here. So you can now click, drag and drop onto your model. If we switch these over to the renderer, you would see that the material has been applied to the model. And this is a very interesting way of creating materials. With a free tool, you can create the textures, which are seamless by the way, and then you can use another free tool to generate different texture maps and use another free tool, which comes as an add-on to populate all those materials that you've created as assets, store them on your asset browser for later reuse and all this happens in a couple of clicks and it is an interesting way of creating materials now if you like to see the displacement you can go over here and change the render engine from ev to cycles and once we do that you can now tell what we have going on here you could see the displacement happening and you can crank this up as much as you want these two materials that you find here are coming from both grease pencil and the default materials and you can choose to clear them out and set this one as it is now we can go back to materialize and create even more stuff and with the previous example that we looked at you can export all of this out and also bring them directly into blender save them as material asset and reuse them at will so this is more like it for those who like to explore stuff about how they get to work with the asset browser we've already covered a video about this 
this previously. So you can simply go over to the link in the description and check it out. And for those that are looking for free materials, you can also take a look at the link in the description. And at the same time, links to all of these tools and resources are also going to be in the description. So do well to check them out. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you like something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.